Hello and welcome to Two Man Meta. I'm Mondo Spanner. And I'm Arnie Kaz. And on today's episode of ROP, we are going to review the X-Men trading card game. So oh, this yeah. was released in 2000 uh, to coincide with the first X-Men movie, I think. Yeah. And I'm going to get the bad parts out of the way first on this because I love this game. So I'm just going to have my little nitpicks first. Well, spoiler, it's a good game. Yeah, it's an amazing game. So we're just going to have a look through some of the cards while we're talking about it as normal. So my little nitpicks with the game is I like the... it comes in a starter set and booster boxes. That's fine. But there's only 131 cards in the set. There's only one set. Yeah. It's so very limited, isn't it? You can get a lot of the cards from a booster box because it's a small set, but there's not a lot of cards to use. I think uh, one of the things I would say as well is is obviously because you're only, you know, getting hold of a booster box is pretty difficult unless you're going to pay for the money. So one of your number one problems there is 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 that really restricts the amount of rares you can have, um, and because the rares obviously have the most powerful abilities, it kind of. Um, does have an impact on your on 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 the game uh, on the deck that you can build. Sorry, not on the gameplay, but on the deck that you can build. So, what's your other gripes? Foiling isn't amazing. It's a lot better than the uh, Warhammer Age of Sigmar Champions <laughs> one. But man's got beef. Yeah, I've got beef. <laughs> but there's also a little gripe in that only the character cards come in the foils. Nothing else comes in a foil. That's a minor gripe. Like I say, I've got to that get some minor gripes me. out of the way because they are so minor with this game. I've just got to clear them out and then we're all good to just pour praise on the game. Praise it. Uh, that doesn't bother me in the slightest. I quite like it. And this is quite nice. It's got a foiling bit and it's got like a subtle effect in the foiling. So that's, I don't know. I kind of like it. So flicking through this, I've put our character cards back in, but not, so some of the rare cards are missing that we're using in decks at the moment. Yeah. But essentially, half of the characters in this game are doubled up as well, because there are yeah, starter. I think that's frustrating. There are starter set versions that are a lower Professor X, a lower Rogue, a lower Sabretooth, and their team values are lower. So it's good that you can throw in some that mix it up, but it also means you've essentially got half as many characters to yeah. use, which is a real disappointment with this game. So first off, starter box. Do we think it's worth it? Yeah, I think it's brilliant. Like I'd play the starter box all day just on its own. Yeah, I thought. Uh, did that come with both decks in it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so you get two thirty card it. decks in there. You need forty cards, so it's not perfect to get started, but it's a brilliant little starting point. Yeah. You get. And they're quite cheap as well, aren't they? You get two, uh, three man teams in there. Yeah. And four villains, which is all you need to play. And we had so much fun just playing the starter set. Yeah, and interestingly, like, say, when I started building my deck and the villains for it, I started going back to the original starting villains because that there's quite an interesting dynamic between you want a villain that can beat up your opponent's team, but at the same time you want an opponent that your team can... You want an, a, bad, uh, a villain that your team can beat up. Yeah, so my first tactic with building <laughs> decks was I just went... Mono for red. Pretty much mono red and just went as aggressive as possible and picked two villains that I knew I could just pummel. And that seemed to work. But it did. the game seems really balanced. Although interestingly, you lost those first couple of games using mono red. It was like later on, once yeah. you'd like had a tweak that it became a bit better. I think the thing as well in here is is because you've only got one set, it feels like the cards are pushing towards mono red because You've got like a, a Wolverine character who's got a red of nine, um, but then red there's a card, a red of five, sorry, but then there's a card that triples it to 15. Whereas if you've only got the standard set, um, his base strength is four, so therefore he only goes up to 12. And that does have an impact on the weight of dice. Um, oh, now then, interestingly, what did you think of the dice in the game? So I love the dice in the game because oh. normally. As a card gamer, you hate dice. Yeah, they kind of like bring but in a variance that you don't want to see. I think the variance in this game keeps it very beer and pretzels, but super fun. Like it's never going to be a super competitive game, I don't think. I think the thing the thing is is that um, hopefully you'll put this up on the screen. But basically, the dice rolls go one is that um, the defending mutant powers trigger. Uh, a two is you do a damage to the attacker. Um, a three, four, five is damage to the defenders. 
and then a six is that the attacker's mutant power triggers. And because mutant powers can only ever trigger once, you can only use one mutant power no matter how many ones you roll, or the attacker can only use one mutant power no matter how many sixes they roll. I think that brings an inherent balance into it. And then there's quite a lot of common cards, I think they're common, aren't they, that allow you to either manipulate the dice roll, one of the dice rolls up or down by one, and then some other ones allow you to re-roll one of the dice before you attack. And say, normally, if you were gonna, the more dice you'd roll, the more twos you'd expect to roll, and so therefore that's doing damage to you and you've got negative effects to you. But because you can tweak them, there's been quite a lot of rolls where I've, say, rolled seven dice out or something, and I've been able, to, and I've only had a couple of bad dice, and so therefore I've been able to re-roll one, tweak one by another, um, and that's that's quite an interesting thing. But yeah, oh yeah, go on. So I've got to get my other two nitpicks out of the way, right. and it all boils down to the points costs on the heroes. So you can get six cost heroes, which means you can go five wide. And in the rule book, it says you can go two wide to five yeah. wide on your heroes, but there aren't five six cost characters. But so you cannot run five wide in this game. But once again, though, that cut to me, that comes down to the fact that it's only got one yeah, set. Yeah, the fact that it's only got one set, but it would have been nice if they just put another six in there just so I could set. run five wide. <laughs> another or set would be better. Just having um, heroes, like you can get 28, out of the 30 team points yeah. but it would have just been nice if you could take two super hench guys at 15 or a 16 and a 40 yeah and that'd be interesting to absolutely run rampant but it's have very little help because that's a bit like um emperor palpatine in uh destiny or um do you know like uh two wide in transformers or something like that but or maybe it would have been nice you know like in transformers how they had um action cards that actually cost points towards your team. That mm. could be an interesting way of. That uh, would have been amazing in this. You know what I, mean? I hadn't like, even thought of that. That'd be a good like, uh, like mechanic dynamic that you could bring into this. So there are no resource cards in this, but essentially the resources is what turn number you're on. But there are power ups that can manipulate that. And in the oh. starter set, there's no power ups. But the power ups, once you start playing the full game with the advanced rules, and you can start playing power ups. They change the game completely. Yeah, definitely. There's a power up that you've got. Well, there's two, isn't there? One, they're on different colours, but what they allow you to do is is to rotate the danger room back by one. Uh, it's just disgusting because if you I if kept... you're playing against someone like my team has got a lot of like late game cards, so you kept putting it down. I kept and then it I couldn't even below attack. four for an entire game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, as soon as it gets up to game. five, turn it back. I've got loads of early ones. I'd I'd like to see. I think you can do multi-coloured decks, like you could do a three-coloured deck. Yeah, you can. And have I've done that. Yeah, but you could do it to start really early and put work in really quickly. I, I, uh, I, I don't know, because the problem is, is you, you've got cards that, when they play out on turns one and two, they're only giving you plus one or plus two to your dice. So unless you've gone down the mono route like you, like mono red, so your base attack was 11 anyway, you're never really going to do much work on the... Um, villain characters. Um, I, I've I've eventually built a mono blue deck, and I think that's got a base of ten or eleven in the blue. Um, but then the problem there is, is that you need to get the missions out to be able and to do the work. And there aren't enough missions in and, a single yeah. colour to start early. So if you had more sets, this game would run amazingly. Yeah. So mechanics wise, thinking of reviewing the mechanics. So we've already said there's no resources, but the mission cards. These kind of act like resources because you, you need them to attack. Yeah, you can't attack unless you've put a mission card of the correct colour on one of your um, heroes, basically. Uh, the, uh, for me, it was more about, well, low down mission cards. So as in low danger room number mission cards and then um, low momentums. Yes. Like low momentums, like that's what this first set's really missing is some really low momentum. So I suppose you could do low power-ups, but they're not necessarily all that great. Although that's but that sick. is insane. Like, yeah. All red X-Men attacks get, get minus, minus one, one strength. strength. So if so you've got you, that on two people... If I'm running three wide and you play that, suddenly I lose three strength on my attack because all of them get minus one. Yeah, yeah, so that would be... And there's strength. one here as well. All green villain attacks get minus one strength. There's one for blue as well. So that's the green villain, not green attacks or green strength on the villain, that's a green villain because the villains 
have yeah. colours just, in the have upper all, corners. They always have all three. Oh, yeah. yeah. But they oh, have oh, a single right. colour up in the corners. Oh, that's interesting. So, I've been loving running the power-ups. You've not run them as much. No. I couldn't find any, or I didn't think... I. I didn't feel like I could find any that really complemented my team. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know. There's, there is some, this card here, <laughs> if you run Cyclops, is it's awesome. It's um, draw three cards. And like in red, there seem to be a lot of uh, missions that draw cards as well. And the draw yeah. is awesome because you suddenly start pulling out momentum and doing crazy stuff. Yeah, it's it, like drawing this, drawing this game is uh, super strong. Like you draw one at the beginning of your turn. But I suppose it's the same in all card games, really. Oh, well, apart from Destiny, where you wanted to kind of like you were limited to your hand size. But yeah, so I that's like. Pretty good. I really love the mechanics in this game, like the three colours of attack. Good. Put one red card from your discard pile into your hand. Yeah, there's uh, one in I think each colour for that. That's cool. Yeah, there's the blue one right there. <laughs> oh yeah, there we go. But look, that's at level Danger Room level six. That's at Danger Room level four. So I, I think a, there's a lot of waiting. Yeah, blue seems to be a later game. Yeah, definitely. And like blue heals villains as well, and that is a really strong. With this card. Yeah, I hate <laughs> seeing that card. Because this game feels really, really balanced, even just in the starter set. Like, yeah. So I was running the Wolverine deck, which focuses on red, and it just tears out the gate, pummeling um, the villains. Whereas Mondo's blue Xavier deck, um, kind of stalls and heals the villains and then it later on the in the danger room, room like you get to the, like, danger room five and six and you start absolutely wailing on them but it feels like i storm out of the gate and i'm bound to win and then you slow it down and then you come back and then it feels like it can go either way or like we had one game didn't we where all of your guys got deleted yeah that your was actual amazing. team died so all of my x-men got wiped out by the villains so it is a viable tactic to use and there's cards it's, it's that difficult boost to the achieve, villain. though. We've only ever had that happen in one game. But there's cards that boost the villains. <laughs> yeah. And if you can add two onto their attack, like, and you swing out with a nine, you're just doing crazy stuff. Well, like, check this one out. Choose a villain and attach this card to him or her. That villain's mutant power can't activate. That's yeah, pretty but strong. Again, but once again, Danger Room 6. In blue. Yeah. It's a lot of late-game plays, like, but that is so strong. So, mechanically... I love that there's no resource cards because it doesn't slow the game down. It's turns to balance the game. But also the missions almost act like a resource because you have to have them to attack. Yeah. So you have to put loads of missions into your deck. So they're yeah. kind of like a resource card that actually does more because you can get utility out of them as well. So like drawing cards, re-rolls, stuff like that. Yeah, I think in my latest deck I've got um 16 or 18 out of 40 cards of missions right because also as well not only do you have to have quite an abundance of missions but you've got to have quite an abundance of missions that either hit you early game mid game or late game and like when i talk about early mid or late i'm talking about danger room one to three for early danger room four to six for mid and danger room seven plus really for late game and it's very rare especially now that you've found out you can turn back bloom in danger room that we get up to turn six or seven danger room six or seven because for red for example they just don't want to do that so this is another thing that i like with the mechanics is the three sets of attack so you can build around a certain color or you can build around two colors but you can three. run a character if you have like um say a psylocke who has one in everything then she's a really good support character that I've been using. Yeah. Because you can tap her to do any lightning or power up in the game. Yes. Yeah, yeah, totally. Because I mean, like I um, like I had it where I took, I, I put in like expensive Professor X. So he's now 14 points. So I've got to shave six, uh, four points off of another one of my characters. So I took out Cyclops for 10 and I put in Angel. And uh, the reason I was going to put in Psylocke originally instead of Angel, but the thing was, was it turned out that I could get more for my total blue if I had Angel in there, even though he had a red of zero. But that didn't matter because I was running Storm and she's got a red of two. So it's, uh, oh, I think she's two, three, the base one, not two, four. But it, it, it definitely gets interesting. Um, there you go. There she is. Oh, she's two, two three. three. 
So it, it, it did it like, you know, the team building aspect of it. Um, if you're going to run three colours, which is what I've I've kind of like done, because all I've really done is just tailored the starter deck or added cards to it mainly, um, is uh, you, you need to have, you need to be covered in all three of these. And another thing as well that we found was, was say, for example, at one point, your team had one green between one. all of the characters <laughs> and like three blue or something. So you go in there with Apocalypse with like, you know, nine green. And you're just like, oh, you can have eight dice to the face. But that was a really interesting balance as well, because going back to Apocalypse. So he got a oh, seven. No, this he was using, wasn't it? So he was rolling six, six dice, dice from turn one to attack. But he's only got a six in red, yeah. and I was swinging out the gate with like ten in red to yeah, begin not, yeah, yeah. to begin with. So there's a balance of whether you want to attack with that character because if they you attack with them, damage. they can take damage. Yeah, and that's another interesting aspect. So we found a lot of the time, or at least I found a lot of the time, I was picking characters to wait <coughs> on, but then attacking you with your villain picks because I didn't want the ones that you wanted to kill to take damage. Yeah, that's true. Like, Sabretooth was terrible, wasn't he, for taking <laughs> lots of damage against himself. It was quite funny. What would you like to talk about now? So, I just want to keep harping on about the mechanics of this game because I love it so much. Like, the theme behind the mechanics as well, like you pick a leader to lead out the mission, you play a mission, and that's how you're fighting the bad guys. That's really thematic. And then you've got the momentum as you're building through the mission. You can add these bonuses because you, you know, you've got the momentum to go forward. It's just really good. I would say the only thing um, that is... So my only nitpick, really, with the mechanics is... It feels like each turn is two parts because obviously you're attacking with the heroes into the villains, then you're attacking with a villain into your opposing t uh, into the opposing set of heroes. Um, and there was quite a few times where we'd got excited with our first attack because we'd rolled so many dice and then basically forgot to attack with the villains, and then we had to kind of like backtrack a bit. But that is a minor quibble at the end of the day. I really like that aspect as well though because it's almost like an asymmetrical game that isn't asymmetric because you're doing this attack on your opponent and you're attacking the middle yeah. with the villains and then your opponent is attacking them separately because they have two health sets. I'd say there was a good one that we, we ended up in one game. I was attacking uh, Artie Kaz with uh, Apocalypse, uh, as we've already been discussing. But his mutant ability, A, it's a mutant power A, which means that it triggers first pretty much before all the other mutant powers, because a lot of the time they're mutant power B or mutant power C. Uh, so there's a C on Angel and there's a B on Bishop. But um, because he was running with four, here, uh, four villains, where one of the villains had to regenerate as its special ability, I was regenerating him. And then that was like yeah, it took me about three turns to kill him instead of the one it turn off. it should have done. Yeah, uh, that's awesome. So mechanically, this game is fantastic. I think the dice rolls add to it because yeah. like we had I, one where I rolled out seven dice for an attack, and I took four damage myself. So <laughs> that was probably the game I got killed in. And um, <laughs> so yeah, it was just it's so balanced because you can go whappy. And it can backfire on you. Like there was one, uh, I think thirteen dice is the most I've rolled in an attack. Yeah, that was but some of it comes back at you. Yeah, yeah, definitely because you've got that one in six, haven't you? Doing damage to yourself. Plus, once you start rolling ones, a lot of the time there's people like Cyclops and people like that who can do damage, like you know, do a single damage if if they get their mutant power off. So then you're copying even more damage in return, and that that can be really quite difficult. So. I think we've harped on about the mechanics of this game and how much we love them Yeah. enough. I love the card layouts as well. Everything's dead simple and clear. Everything's laid out the yeah, same. Obvious. I can read it. I don't have to get my magnifying glass out. And the text box that are blank just don't exist, so you get full art cards all the time. Yeah. Which, at this period of time, in the 2000s, was just We well, awesome. do kind of get text box, don't you? But it's like the fact that all this yeah, is floating. Like the ones without text text box it's not like a magic card where you've got a blank text box you've just got the yeah full true 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 because i suppose you've got all card. your information just boshed there really and everything's laid out really really simple everything's really easy to see 
you know, you can have these cards fanned out in your hand and you can see exactly what it is, what level it is, what mm -hmm. bonuses you get. It's so well laid out. There's such nice cards. I love the artwork. So we've talked about the balance and the mechanics and the layout. The skin. This is a big important thing for me is the skins in games. Not because of just how it affects you. You know, If you've got a skin that someone likes, they can get into it more. So I'm going to love this game because it's got X-Men on it. I love the mechanics without this skin. And I think... So I'm going to go back to something I think I missed in Warhammer Age of Sigmar Champions. That skin would not really, you know, you take the skin off that game and mechanically I don't think it'd work if you put like X-Men in it. Because the X-Men aren't going to deploy units, you know. True, but like you could change it to four. I think there all you're really talking about is you, like the, the reason that skin exists is because of the four AOS factions really. Whereas... I don't know, like, you, you could do the same thing with 40k. You could do the same thing with anything as long as it's got four factions, right? Well, no, it's not the factions. It's the fact that the X-Men aren't going to deploy units to fight each other. They're going to use the champions, essentially, to fight. So it wouldn't quite gel as well. You'd have to change what the units were. So they could still cast yeah, well, spells you wouldn't have because you have, like, mutant you? abilities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah, but... that doesn't lean, lend itself so well... I think I think, to, but this one I think lends it lends itself so well to being adapted for other skins because you've got three different types of attacks. So you could go melee, ranged, and psychic, or you could go melee, ranged, and magic, or melee, ranged, and unarmed. Like so, I think you could put any skin on this game and it'd be fantastic. That's so mad. So that's interesting because I feel like these are really locked to this. Um, the way the missions work, the way yeah, but you could put mission work. cards for anything. Like if you change this to Inquisitor, and it was a bunch of forty k characters, so you've got an Inquisitor, and you've got uh, um, a Brood Lord. Yeah, but then are you then just not talking more mission? about like the granularity of like the actual thing? Because effectively, what you're talking about there is you're talking about individuals, aren't you? Whereas 40k, for example, is about armies. Yeah, but in AOS, have... it's about armies, and that's why you've got champions and units. Yeah, but for this, you so, can go 40k whereas you don't one, have where you armies have a unit. unit. So you could send like a unit of space marines in, and you would have like a chaplain or a sergeant, a heavy weapon, and they'd all have different stats. I no, think... no, but I think you're getting confused there because like the unit is the is the one thing, right? But like then your champions would be like yeah, your chaplain. But the sergeant and heavy weapon, they're part of the unit, right? So I, 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 I don't know. I don't know whether I agree with that. I think like this skin works really, really well with the X-Men. I think any skin would work on this game. And if this game had a Marvel skin or a superhero universe's skin and more sets, it'd be my perfect game. Yeah. Because uh, you like, can I just think, play I think, if it, had, I think if, it, if, it, if it just had more sets, it if would If it be... had three sets, I think it'd be fantastic. Yeah. I love it as it is, like... If you can buy the starter set, buy the starter set, play it. Yeah, give it a go. Because I think that was like 25 quid, wasn't it, or something when we bought it? Well, the prices are going to be all over the place. No, I get it. But like that's how much it cost us, right? And that was in 2022. Yeah? So, I mean, that's like in 2022, a, a buy-in a buy -in on a game for 25 quid is not actually that expensive. So, you know, even... Even though prices do fluctuate and all the rest of it, in comparison to games at that point in time that are of a similar ilk, you know, it's not a bad it's not a bad price, right. basically, is what I'm trying to get at. For the amount of fun that the base set is, you don't even need to buy a booster box for extra cards. You can always expand into that. Yeah. And by all means, if this is on tabletop simulator, get on it. If it was on TTS Get on it because, like, then you'll have access to all the cards. You'll have access to full play sets on all the cards, and you'll have access to all of the heroes and all of the villains. And then that would take away a lot of the, not like frustration, but well, yeah, frustration, I suppose, of, of, of buying it as as a physical thing, or even just print them out. Like, you can find all the pictures for these online. Yeah. Like, do it cheap because this game is so fun. Except you have to buy a color printer then, and color printers suck. You're just bad with technology. <laughs> so, yeah, just play this game. It is amazing. Like, yeah, I, I know we've only recommend it. we've only reviewed um, AOS Champions <laughs> and this so far. 
but I think this is going to be the game to beat for us in reviews. Like, I would quite happily crack this out every night where we're just, you know, chilling at home, having a couple of drinks or whatever. You just go around to a friend's house, you just break it out. Or even at a tournament, you just run it in between games. So what you're saying is, is you want to come to my house, have a couple of beers, break it out and crack it out. <laughs> and that's why we don't let him talk so much. <laughs> so, yeah, just... This game is phenomenal. Like, I love the skin. I'm a Marvel fanboy, so I'm going to love it anyway. Like, yeah, X-Men was a big thing in the 90s when I was a kid. This film was ace as well. I really enjoyed it when I was like, uh, like when I was at uni. The card art is brilliant. The layouts are brilliant. The mechanics are awesome. The dice rolling, I know that'll, it's turn, awesome. that'll turn a lot of people off. But seriously, play it because it works so well. Plus the dice have got numbers printed on them instead of pips, it's awesome. You don't mention that every, you're like it's me with the foil best cards. Bit, man. It's the best <laughs> by far and away. But yeah, seriously play this game. Um, so competitive, we've talked about this already. It could be competitive. I don't think it's gonna be competitive. Not the minute, it's, it's got dice set. rolling in, like even if you had more sets, unless there was a lot of dice mitigation in there, like something like X-Wing had. Back when we were playing X Wing, no, I disagree. I think the ba I think the dice roll in this is pu is perfectly balanced. Like I think it's absolutely well, it's, it's 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 balanced. Like you know, like nothing's ever perfectly balanced. But like you know, that it in some games rolling the dice is like detrimental or it's an add on where you're like, why am I even bothering? Whereas in this game, it's an integral part of it, and you know, it it, it is worth it. And you're trying to you're trying to build up that difference uh, between your total attack and the defender's total attack um, and you're trying to always maximize that or sometimes you actually want to minimize it because you want to reduce the amount of damage you're taking so yeah. I, I, I don't actually i don't actually think that the, the the dice aspect of the game is a is a is a, a negative aspect i think it's a positive aspect i, I think, think it's, it's a, a really positive aspect dice but i think it makes it a less able to be like a competitive tournament game i think that's just because you're thinking of it in a magic thing where, you know, like, it's like every word is almost important. Oh, what's in the stack? Yada, yada, yada. It's just like, oh, shut up. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, just do what you got to do. Roll the dice. Shut up. On to the next game. Let's go. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm, I'm unhappy that you've just lost. But, yeah, we're moving <laughs> on because I've just won. But, yeah, I think uh, I think this could be competitive, but it would need at least three sets. I think dice mitigation is a kind of a... a uh, a card mechanic you could look into it needs more low momentums more low missions um and then obviously in response to that you're going to get more high missions and more high momentums and stuff but even with that little bit of almost negativity like we're saying ways to improve it we're not saying that's what it needs we're saying this is a good game yeah it is a good game it, it could be improved but it's not going to because this is 20 years in the past but if someone so bought the rights to this game and designed it for any other skin, it'd still be amazing. Yeah. And like like you said, if you added in, you know, really strong mission cards or power-ups that cost points to take away from your team, that'd be phenomenal. Yeah, that'd be really good. I'd like, you know, like extra boosts and stuff for like, I don't know, like in Transformers, it was, it was a star on a card. Wasn't Even it? just so. more characters would make this game phenomenal. Yeah, so this one's winning at the minute, I would say. This is the game to beat. But we've got some more coming up, so I think we should be all right. So the last thing to think about is learning the game. I think it was super oh, it's simple really fast. and easy. I think we'd like pretty much. Oh, by turn in the second two, game. <laughs> we, I'd have said by turn two we got the hang of it. By the second game, we knew exactly what we were doing. True, there were bits. I think yeah, and then like when you start building your deck, there's um, other aspects to take into consideration, and when you do, then that kind of like teaches you a little bit more of how you want to run your team. So the thing to think about there is our name, Two Man Meta, comes from when we were playing Transformers yeah. and the meta was just whatever we were playing because there were just two of us. There's only two of us in our town. And um, then we branched out and found more people. But essentially all these games, we're running a Two Man Meta. So the balance in missions and stuff like that, we've got to work out and tweak. But it's always going to be what we play. Like yeah. it'd be really fun to get a group of people together that know how to play this, or even just to hear in the comments section about how people used to play this if they played it back in the day. Yeah, if anybody's watching this who played it back like, in the day, deck building balance. Because be really we've gone like mission heavy. 
mm. because you well I've got mission, mission, and, mission and momentum are like the only thing I've not really got into is power ups, but <coughs> that's because the power ups I want to use you're using in your deck because they're generally either green or red. I'm using the turn back the clock. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and but also so that many as well, which is detrimental ones. to me. Like, there's... Like, there's no power up that removes other power ups. Yeah, there is. Where? Because uh, that's going in my deck. I think it's a lightning, actually. I'm not sure, because I had them in my deck at one point. They might still be in there. But I saw them and was like, oh, we saw these in the it'd box be, opening. It'd be like a lightning, so remove a power up, and then it's... Choose one power up card yeah, in play and five. discard it. But it's five. So, you know, you need a low down one, because the, uh, the power ups that you're sticking out are coming out on turn three. So this is totally redundant, because you're never going to get there. I think these villain card power ups are the one though. Like, there's uh, ones well, when they get. A, that's a yeah, debuff, that's a debuff, but there are power ups in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was the, there was that they one. seem like they're going to be so good. I oh, know there was another one that was a debuff, but you could debuff your opponent's villains. So we have here roll red strength or less, choose one power up in play and discard it. Three. Oh, on three. Yeah, great. Rare card. Yeah, so we've only got like one that's going straight into my deck. <laughs> <laughs> Get, so get we'll get rid of Angel because he's got no red. And but, we'll aha. So, uh, roll blue strength or greater attached card to an X Man. You oh, tap to play good. it. That so he gets plus one blue strength. I've got one that runs red strength. red strength. There's a green strength in here, and these are all ones. Why did I not put all three in my deck? Well, you're not putting those in because I'm about to take them. <laughs> That's the main reason why you're not putting that one in. But yeah, I just want to find um, some of the buffing the villain cards now because I know I've seen them in here somewhere but again we got so much out of the booster box as well because it's such a small set ah here we go so for three choose a villain attach this card to him or her that villain gets plus two red blue or green strength and I, I wanted to put that in my deck as I soon as we started playing well. but then and the then problem I... was was that we we're rolling loads of dice and with the villains because there's very little chance of modifying them it's like, well, in actual fact, that's, you know, probably just going to end up with two extra twos and I'm going to take damage and then lose the game. So. See, the reason I didn't put that in was because I saw that one that removes power ups and I was like, well, if he plays it, I can just get rid of it and I don't need to play it. Mm. <laughs> I'm trying to kill the villains, not kill uh, the X-Men. But I might, uh, next time we play, build a deck where it's focusing on trying to defeat your X-Men team with villains because I think that's a really cool way to play. Yeah, it is interesting way of doing it. Right, okay. Uh so the other thing, going oh, back what? to the learning really quick, because I want to do comprehensively what we've done in every other one, which is only one so far. Kids, I think kids will pick this up dead quick, and I think they'll love it because of the dice rolling. Yeah, I think I think kids could pick this up very quickly. Um, as long as you can get them to read the cards, I, 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 like there's no there's no like hidden bits, or there's no like oh how does this work? It's, it's quite blatant how it works. And... The timing mechanics are dead straightforward. You yeah. Just... Play them out in the order and resolve them. Yeah, it's a straight out of the box kind of game. Like, there's no real interrupts or anything like that. There's no instance in your opponent's turn. So I think it's dead simple. Yeah, cool, man. And that just adds to the playability of the game. Yeah, definitely. Plus, we didn't get this uh, Marrow Woman. So... Uh... Remove three damage counters from Marrow. That's pretty it's crazy. Naughty. And then after uh, after this attack, roll six dice and cancel the number and count the number of sixes. Do that much green damage to the villain who was attacked for a one momentum. <laughs> right, there's just so much goodness in this game. Oh my god, that's awesome! That's mad. So that basically turns your three, four, fives, and sixes all into damage. Plus, you'll get to do your mutant ability on top. Ugh. So that's a real shame we didn't get marrow. <laughs> Okay, right. Thank you very much for joining us. The one thing oh, to say quickly is well, days. So we bought two starter decks, well, starter sets, yeah. and a booster box. And you can see there's a few cards missing from cards that are in our decks currently. But we got essentially one of everything apart from the heroes and villains. Did we get one of every single one of the Rare cards, cards yeah. Oh, that's pretty dope. So I think we've probably missed like... Seven cards from yeah, one booster many. box and two starter sets. And the starter sets, we bought two of them just to mash them together and see if you could mm. just put two together to see if it works. That's so you could buy one and one box set and away you go. Yeah, I think so, yeah. 
So yeah, definitely check this one out, especially if you can get it on Tabletop Simulator. Yeah, if you can get it on TTS for basically free. I and then message us and we will play you. <laughs> yeah, we'll buy a computer and TTS just so we can play this. <laughs> right, are we going now? Yes. Right, okay. Thank you very, very much for joining us. Um, hopefully we haven't rambled on too much. Um, but yeah, it was a good game. Like, really enjoyed it. Um, it. It was definitely easier to get into and definitely easier to play than, say... Uh, the Warhammer Age of Sigmar Champions, the trading card game. It's infinitely easier to bloody say it. And it's more fun. And it is more fun. It is genuinely more fun. Although, AOS, C, TCG, ABC, I don't know, XYZ, um, is, uh, I think that's got potential. This one, the potential is almost immediately achieved. Whereas, uh, with that uh, Warhammer one, that's more kind of a, got potential in the future i think as, as we get into wave two and three that's gonna be really good right anyway sorry apologies i've waffled on there so anyway we're gonna go now um please put any comments in the comments Are they cool comments yes nice um and uh auntie cows will get back to you right nice one cheers see you later if you enjoyed this episode of two man Meta, don't forget to like and subscribe to stay up to date as we release multiple episodes each week if you would like to help support the channel, check out the links in the description below, as well as links to our social media pages. Thank you for watching. See you next episode.